have to have some leverage of competency. The sad part is I have no swag, dog. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this breakdown. Tez Walker, <clears throat> North Carolina Tar Heel, number nine, six one, 197. He's probably about 195. Uh, wide receiver ran a 4-3, I believe a 4-3, 4-4. Four, four, four. Now, before I get started, I have to give you a backdrop and a story of Tez Walker because he's a pretty darn good football player. <clears throat> However, he's only had about two and a half years of on the field experience. What do I mean by on the field experience? He played a two, he played at technically, right? According to the NCAA, he was a two time transfer. He was, but he did not play at three different schools. And so that was a part of that was a, a hang up for him. He was denied twice. Uh, by the NCAA to play for Chapel Hill. But thank goodness he has uh, a head coach who has some success in a college level, who has a voice that people listen to, and that voice is Mac Brown. Mm -hmm. And let's go back and tell you what transpired for what delayed Tez Walker and why, to me, in my humble opinion, He's a fantastic football player. He's also a player who needs to get some more reps. He's going to be a guy's drafted, but the expectation of him is going to be a little bit delayed of seeing how good of a player he can be. He's not a finished product. I don't believe any of these guys in the draft this year, even from – Rome, Harrison, <clears throat> neighbors, you name it. Frankly, they're not they're not a finished product and shouldn't be. Right. But this case for Walker, I, I, I believe he this is a very if you don't know his history, it's a little bit um, complicated. Coming out of college, he's from Charlotte. Coming out of college, he went to North Carolina Central. COVID year, did not play at all. Season, canceled, kaput, mm -hmm. not happening. He also sustained a knee injury. So he didn't play, and he got hurt, and it was COVID. Then he transferred to Kent State. Did pretty good at Kent State. 2021, eight games played, didn't start. Five receptions, 124 yards. Second year, 2022. 12 games played, 12 games started. 58 reception. All of a sudden, I believe, offense coordinator would told me secondhand, uh, so I don't know if the positions exactly happened, unfolded this way, but I'm just giving you a little context. Receivers, coach, leaves. Not in a sequence, but I'm just building it up because it's more dramatic. If I do it. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Receivers coach leaves. Quarterback leaves. Offensive coordinator, head coach leaves. Everything you need in your offense, coach, <laughs> coach quarterback, receivers coach, offense coordinator, they all leave. Mm -hmm. So what do you think he does? Well, he packs his bags too, and yep. he leaves. Goes to Chapel Hill. Sitting on, you know, sitting, waiting for uh, understanding of what will be his fate. He's also his fate. Denied twice. Now, these are college kids. He'll be 23 years old when drafted. He's born in um, 2001. So he's a young kid. Do you think at 22, 21 years old, hey, I've been denied twice that I am going to study a playbook for which it looks like I'm not playing. Actually, he did study the playbook. And because he was denied, he still asked coach, hey, can I just start working on my craft and let me serve our corners? 
His words, let me serve up, a cor- let me tear up these corners, get them prepared for the game by practicing on the practice squad and just running reps. And they said, and Coach was like, heck yeah, you could do that. Coach Brown saw that and got an opportunity, pleaded, stomped, threatened, <laughs> and got him, got him played. He played eight, he played uh, eight games. All right, 2023, third team, all ACC, only playing eight games or nine games. Led the team with seven touchdowns in only eight games. However, at Kent State, first team, all MAC, tied for seventh in FBS in 2022 with 11 receiving touchdowns. Best game, Miami, Virginia, Duke. Worst game. NC State, Clemson, and Georgia Tech. Where does he do most of his work? Only 92 snaps in the slot at 12%. The rest of his work, 653, are out wide. 28 games played, 104 receptions, 1,744 receiving yards, 19 touchdowns. 2023, only three drops. 10 total drops in his whole collegiate career. 25 first downs last year, only in eight games. 68 total first downs. Now, this is a complicated breakdown for me because I I, I like the kid, but I also see that he has some work to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm not putting the kid down and saying he can't play. He could play. But there's some focus issues going on that that I saw. At the at the Senior Bowl, he had four drops. They seem to be concentration, unfocused. I think just because of lack of experience. Again, when he gets to the league, he will have played halfway through the season because he only played one full season. Is in 2022, 12 games. Played 12 games started. Played eight games in 2021 and eight games in 2023. So you combine those two, about two and a half years. And you and add even, the, the you add the mental <laughs> you add the mental stuff. Man, that mental stuff adds a, some months on to you too. So I would say he has about <laughs> two and a half years of experience of playing the game, which means that in his rookie year, Halfway through, he he would only have played three years of high level football. And even with that, like you said, in twenty one, five receptions on seven targets. So he was playing in eight games, but it wasn't like he was the number one, number two, or even number three receiver. So, but he was getting those practice reps. He was on the field, but he was also recovering, like you said, from injury in twenty twenty. So it's really just been these last two years and this last year. Very convoluted because the NCAA decided to draw a line in the sand with exactly one transfer in all of college football. College athletics as a whole, they said, we're going to make an example of one young man, and it's you, sir. Well, luckily he had a coach that was willing to fight for him, an institution that was willing to fight for him. Had his pro day. His pro day was pretty darn good. Drake May looked good. He looked good. Uh, Walker, there's some things he needs to work on. We'll get into it. We'll We'll tell you why for me. He needs to drop his weight a little bit better. Uh, feet gets a little bit outside his framework. He gets a little loosey-goosey. What do I mean by loosey-goosey outside his framework? Well, we got some tape, and I'll show you. It's all very fixable. This is not, oh, he's broken. It's very fixable. But what kind of team that I would love him, love for him to go to he needs a team who has a really, really good coach. That, and when I, and you can ask or say, well, every coach, they're not. Some coaches are teaching the plays. Hey, you're supposed to be here. That's why I talk about the why. I want to see and understand, does this receiver know why he's running a route or why he's using that leverage or why he's getting that release? Not, well, the coach told me so or the playbook says, do this. Right. I want to know, does he know why he's doing it, how he's going to do it? That's really important. So I need a coach who's going to 
Harp on the details, the small details, the insignificant, the fan details. Like, ah, man, you're just nitpicking. Nitpicking is the difference between making a Pro Bowl, making a catch, making a first down, or there being a pick six. And I got some plays to show you off of that. But before we get started, Coley, what you got or what you think about what I just said and why and how? Well, the last, it's the last part that, that I find interesting because I'm looking at PFF and they have their mock draft simulator. And so the teams, the fans that have most drafted Tez Walker to their teams, you're talking about coaching. Number one, 21%, the New England Patriots for a wide receiver who needs help. Not the spot for you. I can say that. I dis- I disagree. I disagree. Let's hear it. Here's why. You ready to hear it? I am, yeah. Now, this turns into, I, man, I hate it, but I got an opportunity, man, had probably about an hour conversation where, where Gerard Mayo, wow, super impressed, super smart. And I'm not saying I thought he was dumb prior to sure, that. Sure, right, right, right. What I'm saying super smart where, you know, when you sit down with somebody, you walk away, you go, Wowzers. Yeah. So much detail and his approach is totally different from Bill Belichick, but yet similar in detailness. Yeah. His approach yeah. is more about caring about the individual first and then the player second and then what I'm expecting third. I love that. While I can love I, that as well, we haven't they, done it with a wide receiver yet. So I'm going to need yes, to see the, it. Why, so this is a shot, and I'm not – it's not meaning it that way. But, you know, if I when I say it, sure, I, I, I do believe the receivers coach that they have now, who is not Troy Brown, I believe. I don't think who's so. Who's a Super Bowl champ, who's a really good – who's a really good wide receiver. Uh, I don't think they have the same coach. And – Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it even, even beyond the coaching, the talents, all of it, every all the process we've had with receivers, unless they were veterans or established or, or had been in the league a little while, has been poor, poor to very poor. And that's over a 20 year stretch. Words, not mine. They are. No, I mean, a thousand percent. But it's also just the truth. They're not even my words. It's just the actual facts. The number two team here is the Chicago Bears. Number three team is the Detroit Lions. Mm. They can use a speed guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And Chicago, I mean, it may not be the coaching. I can't speak to that. You could speak to that more than I could. However, well, they, had receiver, they had a receivers coach, Tyke Tolbert. He right. was there. He's moved on. Um, and they have a new receivers coach. Not really sure who it is. Uh, who could the – but even if we don't know the coaching, they obviously just traded for Keenan Allen. They got DJ last year. What can vets, especially those vets specifically, how much could they help? Oh, they can help a great deal. They can help with taking them under his wing and then also just him watching them run routes right. in practice. Sometimes you get a Keenan Allen or you get a veteran wide receiver who's had so much experience that the coach gets credit. Right? If you look <laughs> at some of these coaches, some of these coaches that get credit for, hey, I coach <laughs> – I coached uh, – what's the guy – what was uh, what was uh, QB Gooden Jr.? Rod Tidwell. Yes, Tidwell. You get a coach – oh, man, I, I coached Rod Tidwell. Man, Rod Tidwell was a baller before he even <laughs> got you. So sometimes these coaches get credit for things they never even really did. Right. But there are some coaches out there who are very detailed. A guy like Tess, who I would love to see him go to, I know the receivers coach in Detroit – Randall L. Shout out to Randall L. Randall L is a dope coach. He's down to detail. Commanders, Bobby Ingram, heck of a coach. He's down to detail. Uh, wherever Tyke Tober ended up going, I haven't reached out to him. He's he's a really good coach. D- Tyke, at the time that I had him in Carolina, he, he helped me tremendously. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, Tennessee. But- He's in Tennessee. According to Wikipedia, I don't know how, how okay, updated yeah, that is. That's right. That's right. That is. Um, it just got better. Definitely. Um, Trey Burks, I think. Is that the guy from Arkansas? Yes, Traylon Burks, yeah. Yep. He's going to get better. Yeah. 
another team that added another vet to that room too with, with Ridley and D Hop. So that's yeah. Get good well, coaching, get Ty, good vets. Ty's gonna help Ty's gonna help Ridley because Ridley struggles at times getting off the press. He's not the same player when he's but he doesn't have to worry about it because he brings he attacks you so much with the speed that corners decide they'll rather drink their poison by by giving themselves a chance, they think, by right. playing off coverage. I don't know what film y'all watching. That boy, t- <laughs> you off seven yards, that's like being off two yards. He's he, he takes two steps. You, he's he's already past you. But, hey, what do I know? I, never, I play corner a little bit, and I discovered <laughs> I'm not a good corner. So they switched me to wide receiver. Yeah. Thank you, Coach T. God rest your soul. <laughs> All right, let's get to this film. Now, this is a play that I got to show you. He has some tendencies. Running to stop, opens up the gate a little bit. That's going to come back to haunt him. Those are the details I'm talking about. Open up the gate. A better corner is going to take full advantage of a play like that. So you're going to break down quicker, turn around a little sharper? Uh, coming back towards the line of scrimmage. Sure. Squaring it, having your, having your back. To, between the, the the ball and the defender, not having your arms in which you're catching a ball. Right. And that way now it makes it into a tug of war. I don't like that. So um, this is against Syracuse, a stop route or hinge, two straight up, but, looks, but look at his right foot open up the gate. It's a good catch, but this is the detail I'm talking about. Watch that right foot. Ah, see how he opens up the gate. See how he slides. Yeah. He he falls a little bit. Let's run it again. Watch his foot. Opens up the gate. So he got. You see him gather up. Yeah. Gather, arms, feet. See that foot right on the twenty. Kind of slips a little bit. Has to come back. Throw isn't on time. Great catch. It's a foot in, exciting on the sideline. Should be. Again, see the pebbles bouncing up? Yeah. Again, gets outside his framework. He did almost drop that football. I'm not going to show you again because I don't want to talk ill will about him. This Miami. My opinion, better corners. Opens up the gate. Look. Now, the throw should have been a lot better. You see how he gets caught? Mm Mm-hmm. That corner was a, knew what he was doing. It could have been a pick. It wasn't a catchable ball. This is his bread and butter, though. Catching the ball on the go, running. Here we go. He's not the guy that's highlighted. He's the guy that's getting the football. It's against Georgia Tech. You know, why I bring up Georgia Tech is because they, they said this was one of his worst games. Watch what he does at the line. This is why sometimes when your stance is extended too much, you have to now reload to explode, which delays you. Look at him use his speed. This is his bread and butter, though. This is what he's. This is what. These are the plays that why people are going to be excited to get him on his team. Because if you get him in space and he can run, he's a dangerous man, Majama. That's yeah. what he is. I was going to say 17 yards per reception, 10th in the nation, average depth of target. The the downfield appears to be where he's going to thrive early and often. Yes, this is the flashing of why people are going to draft him and what they're going to expect. Look at that catch. Yeah. I mean, well, it's not a catch, but just his ability to go in for it. But you see how he opens up the gate a little bit, though? You see what I'm talking about? Look. Oh, yeah. Opens up the gate. Yes, the throw should have been better. I agree. But here's the part that I don't like. Why do they keep putting him on stop routes and that is not his best route? That's the part I don't understand. Ball, oh, ball got tipped. That's why. 
See how he comes out a little flurry? Yeah. Goes through his hands. Considering where the corner is on that and it getting tipped, is that a bad throw? Obviously, it getting tipped. Hard to say, uh, but. It depends on how pro football f- focus. <laughs> grades is it, it. Is it a drop? <laughs> how they grade it? Is it a drop? Did he? Is it his fault? Did he do it? Doesn't sell a route the way he should. We're talking about better corner. Stems inside, but he doesn't give him much. Corner's already gathering. Quarterback throws with anticipation, thinking that his guy's going to beat him, and he doesn't. Doesn't sell her out again. And no indicator stuff. Nope. This is a, this is, this, let me, let me go ahead and teach. So he goes inside. What he should do. Now he's inside. You see that corner now has to chase. As that corner chases, I would like, my humble opinion, go on the hash, push. Push up to the hash. But now he goes so far inside, now he has to break down. Corner flips his hips, circles. Then now he has to, you see his feet, his foot is outside his framework. So now he has to gather, round off. And now as he's rounding off, the corner is rounding downhill. That's good transition by a good corner. Goes back down. Ball is thrown only where the receiver can catch it. DB is slightly early. I agree. I confirm that the DB is early. But you got to sell that route better. Tempo. Ball should have should have been a better throw, but guess what? I'm a receiver, and I can say this. If the ball hits your hands, it's the receiver's fault. Feels fair. That's how, that, that's how we go. Watch the tempo, though. Look at this tempo. Remember what I told you about his stop route? Mm-hmm. When you're playing better corners, you open up this gate. Look at this. See how that corner puts his foot in the ground? Yow! Yeah pick that's what he needs to improve on because he goes to the next level you can't run that you can't run this route like this see how he's drifting back yeah to the sideline yes he's giving the corner an alley like a clean alley to go get that ball he's he's saying hey come get it your ball now is it fair to say dare i say it is NC State a basketball school? Huh? I think it's a, just a, a, the, the school in, in North Carolina right now. Yes, it is. All right. Let's go to this film. NC State is in the champion, is, is in the Final Four. Women's too. Shout out to the women. Kids, see this? Great athleticism about this corner. Opening up the gate. He keeps drifting. He's drifting, drifting again. Drifting outside his framework, and he falls. But I love his tempo. End zone view of this one. Why I like this, why I'm showing this play, the end zone, is the ball is thrown high. You know what I love that he doesn't do? He doesn't make a business decision. He goes up and he understands exactly what he needs to do. Just goes through his hand. Little, had a little hot sauce on it. Look at this play, though. Watch this. Had to slow down. This is what you're going to love about the kid. He goes up and he attacks a football. Outruns him. He can run. He can flat out just run. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. His grade versus man coverage, and you can say whatever you want about grades and that, was 54.8. Was 54.8, so Ooh, mediocre to poor. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. I would but, call it poor. But no, they do. Yeah. That's what, they, that's what they're, they call it. Yeah, so, but, I'm, but, but, I, they, but they're not, the context not, from what yeah. you're showing is the type of routes he was running that didn't yes. suit his strengths. And that can yes. probably be explained by 
not having a full summer, not having a full camp, coming into the season midway through, and not I'm not saying not grasping the playbook, but the playbook not being tailored to his strengths. He opens up the gate on the stop routes. What he runs well, what he does, deep overs, ends, go route, post, glance. He needs to stop opening up the gate. Because those routes where you need to break down, like the stops, that's where you need to attack the leverage, break down the DB. He's not there yet, but he will get there. You can clearly see all the athleticism that he has. He needs to get stronger at the finish, which that will go into filling up his, filling in his body when he gets in, when he gets in a real, not saying he is not in a real weight room, but when you, all you do, instead of going to class, you're working out, you're getting strength, you're working on your hamstrings, your curls, your backs, your traps, your pecs, triceps, biceps, all of those things, those little small muscles to help you extend and create a lot of create a lot of force off the release his hands are pretty good he can ball sometimes he short steps on the out routes but his ceiling is very high because he doesn't have a lot of tread on the tire and i just believe moving forward once he gets with a coach that locks him in that now he's living, breathing football constantly, harping on his game, going into details, looking at the finite little small things about his feet. Where's your right foot when you come down? Where's your left foot? Are you not being too high, not being too low, not overselling, not underselling? When he gets that, I would say next offseason, you'll see dramatic change once he gets in the building. Then once he gets in the offseason, I would say his second year he'll come out he may end up taking somebody's job. That because of his speed and his athleticism, and then you add the polishness of a good coach, all of a sudden, a developmental guy will all of a sudden take your job. Where I believe he will go. I think he'll go in the third round. I can also see him if some guys start to come off the board board early enough. He will fall or he will jump or leapfrog into the second round because people are afraid because they earmarked him with his athleticism that they don't want to lose out on. Right. But a first and second round pick are guys who can play today. And I'm not talking about play today in, well, we'll give them 10 or 15 plays. I'm talking about play today like a Jordan Addison. Right, right, right. Right, Justin Jefferson. But a third and fourth round, that's, we're going to put them in the game and we're going to put them on a pitch count to grow his confidence, to give him some experience, but he's not going to start all 17 weeks because he's not there yet, but he can get there. So you think it would benefit him greatly to go to a team that doesn't necessarily need a receiver this year? Well, if you need a receiver this year and you're drafting in the third round for a wide receiver to start, either you know a lot of stuff that other people don't know, or you just, that's an interesting pick. That's a, that's a, that's a nice way I would. There are, there are a lot, I listen, 22 positions, a lot of these bad teams have multiple needs. So if team goes quarterback in the first round, offensive lineman in the second round, now, yeah, you are trying to fill that wide receiver void in that third round where, where well, he well, might be going. Look at Tang Dale. Tang Dale was drafted in the third round, right? Sure, yeah. He didn't start immediately, right. but he was in the game enough that they said, man, we got to get him involved more and more. Right. And there was still part of his games that he struggled with, right? Before he got hurt, he struggled at times coming off the line versus press. He also struggled to block sometimes. Sure. Right? He was in the injury that he sustained blocking was everybody, a lot of receivers know, man, it's hot. You you got to tap, you got to tap dance when you're around the blocking, uh, around the 
the pile when running, when the running Dang. play is going on. He was sitting there, legs in there. He got had a that's hot potato, bro. And he got rolled up on. Not his fault. Right. But you right. also got to be aware. I was around the block. Hey, ya, ha, ha. Just because you know you can get rolled up on, ankle, broken ankle, all that stuff. So that that's those are the things you learn over time. I right, bet right, you right. I bet you next this year coming up. When you see Tank blocking and the pile comes, watch watch how them high knees get so high. <laughs> and it's an interesting point about experience, right? Because people will look at his age, like you said, 23, once he gets into your facilities. But that doesn't equate to football experience because of what we said, 2020, no season at all. Didn't get any reps. Mm-hmm. 21, recovering from injury and also not starting. 22, full season of FBS. 23 misses the first month, then is playing catch up the rest of the season, trying to get with the rest of his teammates. So, like you said, yeah, developmental, not in a, a negative way. Yeah, not in a negative way. But that's that's Tez Walker, wide receiver from Chapel Hill. You have been stamped. 89's approved.